Hello, my name is Jeremiah Talamatis, and welcome to the Red Team Opsec podcast, where we chat about physical red teaming, social engineering, and penetration testing. This podcast is supported by Red Team Security Training, a premier provider of live instructor-led online pre-recorded and also classroom-based training on physical red teaming and social engineering. Visit redteamsecuritytraining.com for more information. If you haven't checked out uh, episode four, go ahead and do yourself a favor and take a moment to, to listen to it. In episode four, I introduced a sort of a first of its kind methodology for physical red teaming. So if you're curious about what the heck physical red team OPSEC or where it comes from, um, I definitely suggest giving it a listen. So thank you for taking the time out to listen today. Um, kind of with the exception of episode three, I record all of these episodes in one take. I think I've mentioned that before. The intro and the stingers, all that stuff are done on the fly and I don't edit them in. So, um, you know, I don't edit out my verbal flubs and the times that I lose my train of thought either. So I sincerely thank you for listening in despite not having, not having a super produced show. All right. So in this episode, I like to recommend uh, three tips for a better social engineering operation and three mistakes you should avoid. All right, so please stick around. So thank you for listening today. Since we are discussing social engineering today, I'd like to uh, invite you all to join me on Friday, November 13th, 2020 for my one day live and online social engineering expert training taught by me uh, via gototraining.com. And if you're interested, uh, you can take an additional $20 off when you use the coupon code NOV as in November 2020. That's NOV2020 during the checkout. Go to redteamsecuritytraining.com for information or uh, check out uh, the link in the show notes. All right, so let's dig in. <clears throat> let's start. Uh, let's first start out with the th three things you should not do when social engineering. All right, here we are. So the number one thing uh, I should say, number starting with number one, right in no um, in no certain order, is going straight to using tools. And what do I mean by that? Well, tools are a necessary part of any social engineering operation. I use them all the time. But failing to understand, you know, human behavior first is a huge mistake. And I see this all too often where social engineers are, are tasked with an operation for the first time and they immediately default to, you know, using the social engineers toolkit before ever like really realizing how to craft an enticing and realistic operation using language or facial expressions or body language is in, intended to really truly test, you know, human trust. So instead, I, I, you know, I highly recommend, recommend seeking out training like the one I'm offering that focuses on everything from you know, reading body language, and facial expressions, and, and lots more things like crafting certain language and emails, for example, really, really kind of capitalizing and exploiting that human trust layer. All right. Number two is only targeting usernames and passwords. Do not do that. In my experience, usually about 60 to 70% of the time, my clients don't actually realize which information they contain that they hold and protect is actually deserving of protection or you know, knowing what's really important to them. It is critical to interview your clients about their business to truly tease this information out. Um, I like to tell a story about a, a client of mine and, and a nationwide haircutting franchise in the United States whose chief concerns were certainly um, their customer lists and all that sort of PII and, and uh, information regarding credit card information, certainly. But was one of their chief concerns was actually the algorithms 
that they use to select store locations, right? So the real estate algorithms that they use and in, in, in the, um, the methodology that they use to select these locations for the retail stores. Okay, that's a really good example of, of um, thinking that, you know, their information is, is A, but really it's, it's something else. All right. So the next thing you should avoid doing in a social engineering operation is resorting to only email phishing. So email phishing is important to test, certainly is, but it's only, you know, really one of those ways, uh, one of the many attack vectors, if you will. Um, you know, we have telephone phishing, we have face-to-face -face social engineering, we have SMS, even, even fax, right? There's still people using fax, uh, and there's, there, there are different ways in using fax machines and sending fax messages to, to, um, to certainly uh, social engineer targets, and even QR codes. You know, in the, in the, now in the days of uh, uh, COVID, we're seeing a lot of organizations, you know, we see a lot of restaurants you know, providing their menus, here, scan this QR code, um, whereas we didn't see that attack vector before. So definitely educate yourselves and your clients on the many different attack vectors and craft tests that are, are relevant to your clients' needs. The Red Team OpsAC podcast is sponsored by Red Team Security Training. Red Team Security Training specializes in delivering online and classroom training in physical red teaming, social engineering, and penetration testing. Visit redteamsecuritytraining.com and use the coupon code PODCAST1 to take 10% off the physical red team operations bundle. All right, now for the three things that you should be doing for a better social engineering operation. Here they are in no particular order. Number one, understand what powers human trust. Okay, seek out one or more of the following resources I'm going to mention before actually taking part in a social engineering operation, okay? Uh, one example is the, is the social engineering training I'm providing on, on November 13th and others like it. Uh, books by Chris Hadnagy. I'm, per, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. His last name is H-A-D-N-A-G-Y. Uh, Chris has uh, a, a number of books. I want to say three books. Uh, could, be, could be two, I'm not really sure excellent resources for understanding both the technical side of it too, but also getting that foundation, extremely important. Um, I wrote a book as well called The Social Engineer's Playbook. That's another good resource for understanding that kind of that foundation. Uh, two other books I recommend. One is called uh, What Everybody is Saying. Not like everybody, but everybody. This is a great resource for understanding uh, human um, you know, human gest like gestures, gesturing, body language, facial expressions, micro expressions, things of that nature. And the next one I would say is, is a book called Influence. Uh, Influence is a, also one of the um, uh, excellent resources I, I, I absolutely recommend as well. Number two, what you should be doing for a better social engineering operation, develop what I call a first line response. First line response. Okay. My experience with face-to-face -face social engineering has, has taught me to prepare for some of the most common challenges posed by those who, who kind of question me or are suspicious about my, my presence there, my being there. Um, you know, writing and rehearsing my responses to what I, what I commonly refer to as these three very common challenges has helped me tremendously to avoid fumbling over my words. And it also helps me boost my confidence as well. So the three common challenges I, I typically call out, and I kind of mentioned this in my training as well, is having a first line response to the question, how can I help you? Okay. The next one being, are you here to see someone? The next one being, excuse me, who are you? Right. So those three common challenges uh, throughout my experience has, has, uh, has been very, you know, at least preparing for um, having a response, rehearsing it, 
um, knowing it like at the back of my hand and, and really being able to recite that back when someone asks me uh, those questions has helped me, you know, quite a bit in, in, you know, even just as a confidence boost, um, it helps me kind of carry out my, my operation with a little, with a little more clarity. All right. And the third and final one today is provide or recommend security awareness training um, so that the curriculum uh, incorporates the social engineering tests results. Okay, so let's say you had an example, for example, if you, if your client performed really poorly on a pretext that utilize masquerading as company employees, whether it's email, um, on the phone, or maybe you did it in person, uh, make sure that that, that security awareness training, uh, make sure there's some, some type of follow-up that emphasizes corrective, a- corrective action for those specific scenarios. That way you can really reinforce and kind of continually test. And again, I should also mention that any security awareness training, as I said, should include those social engineering test results and, 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 um, and uh, not only should it do that, emphasize that corrective action for those scenarios, but also uh, should be done on a routine basis as well. All right. That's all I have for you today. It's a short episode. I'm, I'm glad you stuck around. Thank you for t- taking the time to listen in. Um, if you enjoy this podcast, please, please like, subscribe, and share with your colleagues. Until the next time, I uh, hope you have a good day, and we'll talk to you soon.